All right, let's get that audio check done. No, Greg, Dawn has not been putting makeup on me. That's a good one. I just want to, I just need a couple people tell me the audio is good. Rough round the edge. Rough round edge. Never been so happy to see ads. I didn't know you could see it. Oh, I guess at the beginning of my videos. Because I disabled the mid-rolls. Good. All right, that's enough, people. Thank you. Tokyo in the house. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, it's finally raining. Robert Smith came from Paul Cook, huh? I've been following Paul Cook since he went to Egypt. I used to follow him when he was doing some Malta stuff. He was doing some UK, UK stuff. Um, as a matter of fact, Martin and I had talked about Paul Cook. I was I was thinking about putting him on my channel and talking to him. And then he got wrapped up in some, some stuff, man, personal business. Kind of put some links to some private stuff on his channel, man. Got him in a little trouble. I just kind of backed off, man. But that doesn't mean his material's not good. It's not mean he's not boots on the ground because he is. So, you know what? Whatever it happens, it happens. But I like I like Paul. Good. I'm glad the audio's good. Say, oh, Karen Lewis says, "Who's going to San Diego to meet up?" I am. Please say hi if you see me. All right, Karen Lewis. Let me tell you about this meetup. You guys already know. Maurice, my brother. Good to see you again. Okay, October 21st is the meetup. We're going to be there about 10 hours. We have this old theater already already uh, acquired. It is directly across the street from my publisher's bookstore, the book tree. Now, um, you guys already know Max Egan's going to be there. Logan of Decode Your Reality is going to be there. Uh, Danny of Removing the Shackles, representing the Unfuckers group. She's going to be there. Toltec Shaman, you guys know him. Joel, calls him, uh, he goes by Perceiver on YouTube. He's going to be there. Martin Leakey, Flat Earth British. You already knew he was going to be there. Guess who he's bringing? He's bringing Autodidactic. That's right. All, all the way from Australia, Campbell is going to be at the Archaics Meetup on the 21st. We've got about 60 tickets left to sell, and that's it. We can't, we can't oversell because the venue will only take 300 people. So we had over 350 people on our first meetup, but it was a bigger venue. This is not a real big venue. It'll comfortably sit 300 people. So those of you wanting tickets, you better, you better, better get to it. We also have Archaics merch that has never been sold on, on, on the channel. Uh, a lot of custom stuff, yes. We have some girls that are making a lot of custom archaic stuff. All these bling hats and vests and over shirts. And this is all girl stuff. For you guys, we got some new shirts coming out, new hats coming out that are not like the other ones. Uh, these are nice too. But for the girls, yeah, we got some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, you guys know Robin. I brought her on the first meetup. Robin, this is what she does for a living. She does the craft shows. And uh, she's very successful at what she does. But now she's doing Archaics merchandise. All homemade. It's awesome. So we got a real serious video to put out. This video is going to determine the future of many channels on YouTube. I promise you that. Because this video right here is going to break it down as to whether somebody is trying to reveal the truth, trying to, trying to be about the truth, trying to be altruistic to the human family, or if they're just a grifter trying to make money and they don't give a damn what the truth is as long as you sub and like it all, all their presentations. Here's going to get down, as we say it, it's going to get down to the nut cutting.
first video in a series that I'm doing that is uh, basically showing just how fraudulent the models are that are being perpetuated across the publishing world and now the social media world now that, you know, since the Internet has, has taken storm in the last, what, 25 years. So we're going to go deep into this video. And just like my other deep presentations, I will be providing a free PDF download because you're not going to believe what you hear. Not a sensationalist, guys. When I make claims, I back them up. This video is going to blow your mind about the Zodiac, its origin, just how old it is, and just how unknown the Zodiac was to the entire world until it just mysteriously appeared. At the same time, a whole new paradigm-shattering belief system just appeared. They appeared at the same. They were written at the same time. They appeared at the same time, and by the same people. So we're going to get to that in this video. And the free PDF download will be available about five, six minutes after this after after this video is over. Just long enough for me to upload it to Podia and then provide you a link in the description box and in the pinned comment. I suggest you take that, you take the PDF that I provide in this video and you share it because other people are not going to believe it unless they see it. You need to send this to people like Graham Hancock and everybody else who's interviewed him because it's going to shut them up. There's no way around these arguments. I will I will debate anybody in the world about this output. You can't get around it. You can't squeeze through it. You can't reinterpret it. I'm not going to leave loopholes. You guys know that. So, we're going to uh we're going to get down. We're going to get to the nitty-gritty because this is some amazing material. Euthanasia, how you doing? Shiva shampoo always in the house. <coughs> Mr. C, I see somebody talking to Meryl Gigi, Pamela Swan, thank you guys, I got some awesome, awesome moderators, Jahara Lee's in the house, uh, Dawn is not here right now, and I don't know when she's going to pop up, uh, after we got back from the New Mexico trip, well, I, I actually, she flew back with Maurice to Texas, and uh, I took a detour to Colorado, I'm not going to go into the details because I'm not going to demonize this person, but somebody had sent me an email. And in that email, they had offered me 760 American Antiquarian magazines. And you guys know I'm going to share that with my community. I'm definitely going to do a bunch of videos out of these magazines. And uh, the email should have been more specific. All it said is if you're willing to make the drive, I have 760 American uh, uh, Antiquarian magazines up here. That is very. It, because so many people donate to archaics and because there was no no language here that said that they intended on selling them, I was very surprised after making a six-hour detour, which took 12 hours of travel time away from me coming home. I just got home last night, guys. Um, uh, Dawn's been back for three days, so in Maurice, but... I took a, uh, it's 12 hours out of my time just to find out that they were going to put an $8,750 price tag on these five boxes of magazines. And then I was misled as well because the email said that, that the large majority of them were from the 1800s and some of them were from the early 1900s. But that's not what I found. It was one box with some from the 1800s and it wasn't very many, but all the other boxes were all 1900s. You know, yeah, I'm just, uh, that's on me. That's on me. I should have emailed this person and told them to be detail specific before I had my team drive with me six hours just to find out that uh, all this was BS. And uh, yeah, not well, not with it. I even I I was even pulling a thousand cash cash out just to buy the magazines that I wanted. But you know, there was some other stuff going on. So somebody else was involved and you know what just i'm not going to name them i'm not even going to tell you what town it was it's not even important i learned a very valuable lesson before i just show up in places i'm going to get all the details right first because all uh, that right there I, I don't care about staying on the road a little extra longer i read books i work on video clips i edit videos but i'm not the one driving and other passengers you know what they get frustrated it's long it's a long time to drive so i did lose out a little bit i give out bonuses that you know uh I was the one that wanted those American antiquarian magazines, but it's okay. It's okay. Lesson learned. And I'm back in time. 
didn't stop me from releasing videos. That whole trip, I still released a video every other day and two videos on Archaics TV. So I'm my own videos. I'm talking about other ones I, I upload. So I've, I'm the whole trip was good. Got 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 a got a Pecos conspiracy video out of it. Didn't even plan on doing. Martin and I just couldn't stop seeing what we were seeing. It was all fake. All the whole the whole national monument supposed to be built 400 years ago. None of it's true. I'm like, you guys remember, man, stonework was my thing. Paradise Rock Gardens. You can still look up my website and see all the work that I did as a contractor. ParadiseRockGardens.com. I'm a stone guy. I know my I, I know my I know my geopolymers, guys. I, I know what works. I know what stones work, man. I'm really good at flagstone and pavers. What I was seeing was was a really shoddy job. It was terrible. But that's okay. That is okay. Yeah, tetra, tetra Biblos. For those of you who don't know, Tetra is Greek. It means four. Biblos is books. Four books. Very important. Very important to realize that this is this is this is not gonna go where you think it's gonna go, guys. This, I'll, even I was taken aback by the wealth of information that I suddenly came across when I started doing a deep dive on the Zodiac. Now, I've done a Zodiac video in the past, and I've done one tarot video in the past explaining the origins. But I didn't have this information. I didn't have this wealth of information. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Corey. Thank you, thank you, Merrill. JJ Recon, always. Love, brother. And keep it clean. Greg G's telling y'all to keep it clean. That means somebody's not doing that. Yeah, you guys know, uh, it's a hallmark of my channel. I do not entertain negativity. And uh, I don't care if you argue with me. I don't care if you disagree with me. But you're not going to come on my channel and condescendingly try to educate me as to why I'm wrong and you're right. Because most of the people that do that only watched one video to get triggered. And they have no idea the wealth of data that I've presented in 539 other videos. So I don't tolerate that at all. And I especially delete and block anybody I see that is attacking someone else. Yeah, there's going to be no bullying in my chat at all whatsoever. Say what you want to say, but be very careful how you say it. I block people on a daily basis, and despite the over 1,000 to 1,500 people that have been blocked off this channel, the channel is still growing exponentially every day. So I, I'm, I'm going to take that as evidence that I'm doing the right thing. I'm not entertaining any negativity. Don't bring it to my channel. All right, let's see. Thank you, Michelle. Oh, we got a long video. This, this video might be a little long, guys, because we got to get to the nuts and bolts. We got to get to the nuts and bolts, guys. It's I'm telling you, this is one of the few times in my life that, that I was really surprised. I was not expecting at all to find what I'm about to reveal to you about the Zodiac. I wasn't expecting to find this. I was expect I was expecting it to be controversial. I vaguely knew this, but uh, yeah, this PDF is probably going to be my most downloaded, most popular PDF. I know Graham Hancock's going to read it. I don't care what Greg Braden says. He knows. He's heard of Archaics. He's heard of Jason of Archaics. He lied. I know he lied to Joe. I got too many people that's been sending him emails. His people emails. So, Equally so, I am very well aware because I know people who know Graham Hancock. He knows all about Jason and Archaics. He's being quiet. Why? Because he can. He can. Yeah, he's not about telling the truth. I mean, I'm about to expose more of that in this video here. It's amazing the depth of deceit that's going on in the publishing industry. It's amazing. It is all orchestrated and everything. Remember I said this by the end of this video. Remember everything that is being promoted today on social media and in the publishing world and in print is all trying to do one thing. Well, two things really. Hide the phoenix and hide the vapor canopy. Everything's just the opposite, guys. 
Instead of a phoenix you're supposed to be looking for, they created a zodiac. Instead of a vapor canopy we're supposed to remember, they invented ice ages. It's amazing, guys, how deep this shit goes. We're going to get to it. Nanny Boo Boo, I know. I know you know he lied. You can see it on his face when he... He was really surprised by, by John's question. Uh, Archaics is getting some some uh, some good um traction, guys. You guys know that I was advertised all over Alex Jones' uh, channel for a while uh, due to uh, Greg Reese. Greg Greg Reese had done a really good uh, cyclical history pole shift video and featured some of my work on 2046 and and my book cited my book Anunnaki Homeworld. Well, recently, Greg Reese and Logan of Decode Your Reality did a show. And again, they discussed some of my work. And that's pretty interesting. But just yesterday, I believe it was yesterday or the day before, Tinfoil Hat, uh, Sam Tripoli, and Greg Reese talked about uh, my 2040 Phoenix research, 2046 research. And Greg Reese went into some detail, plugged my website, and mentioned my name a couple times in that interview. So I've always liked Greg Reese. He's got the voice of somebody who's supposed to be doing these documentaries. He's good at that. He's good at that stuff. Greg, Greg Reese comes off to me as, as a guy who's genuinely interested in the truth. Now, I also perceive him to be someone who is who is coming to contact with so much data that he's still having trouble eliminating the false paradigms. And that's what archaics is about. I'm, I'm about eliminating all this false crap which is what we're going to do in this video. It's amazing, guys. So, you guys know that Graham Hancock has asserted that the ancient Egyptians knew of the Zodiac. Graham Hancock said that. He said that in, multi in multiple interviews. He said that in his published books. The ancient Egyptians knew of the Zodiac. He even said that the ancient Egyptians had calculated the great cycle at 25,920 years. Now, this is done by giving 30 degrees to each one of the 12 houses of the Zodiac and then claiming that that 30 degrees takes 2,160 years for each age to pass, each age of the sun. Then it's just simple, uh, it's simple arithmetic, 2,160 years per house times 12 houses is 25,920 years. It sounds real good. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to tell you, and I'm going to show you in this video, that every bit of that was very recently made up. Let me drink some coffee to that one. Because there's a whole lot of astrology channels out there and tarot channels out there that are going to get pissed when they see, when they listen to this presentation. I promise you that. All right, guys. Jamie Robbins, thank you, bro. Yeah, I'm back home, guys, because this is where I do my best videos, in the studio. I'm going to be doing some in my other studio as well, the small studio that, that you guys really became familiar with. Yeah, but uh, it's crazy. So, anyway, guys, there's a lot of people who have, who have written about the 25,920-year cycle they're calling it the zodiacal cycle, the great age, and they claim that two destructions of the world happened during the cycle, roughly around 12,000 years. You've been seeing this 12,000 year number thrown out quite a bit, and then Graham Hancock sent in to add more details, such as Atlantis was 11,600 BC. He tells you all the time, just do the math, it's simple. Solon told Plato that the Egyptians told him that 9,000 years earlier from 600 BC when Solon heard this, Atlantis was destroyed. 
Now, I have several videos pointing out that all this is anachronistic. It's total, it's total BS. Every bit of it is BS. It was known to be BS by at least 40 different ancient authors and modern authors. And I cited them in a, a PDF download, just like the one you're going to get here on my last video ranting about the ridiculousness of, of Graham Hancock's theories. So... I'm going to tell you now, there's not a single reference in any ancient text to a 25,920-year cycle, not one. It is debatable. It is debatable. And what I mean by that is you're welcome to debate me, but you're not going to be able to find a single reference. This is a very new idea. It's a very new idea. That the Egyptians knew of a zodiac is not true. Graham Hancock lied. The Egyptians did not know of the Zodiac unless you reinterpret what an Egyptian is. Let me explain. The Ptolemies were from Macedonia. Macedonia is northern Greece. The Ptolemies were Macedonian rulers of Egypt. Over 500 years after Egypt fell to Persia, Babylon, Assyria, they fell to Macedonia. The Egypt, Egypt fell to Alexander the Great. Egypt fell to Rome. The very oldest zodiac known in the world and acknowledged across the board in academia, all scholarship agrees the oldest zodiac is found in Egypt. It's at Dendera. It is a structure that was specifically built by Greeks in the Roman era around 75 to 100 BC. Do you, do you understand the problem here? For those of you who are not innate chronologists, the oldest depiction of a zodiac is only 2,100 years old, years ago. The oldest depiction. So it gets worse than this. This is not only the oldest depiction, it, apparently it's the first. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to explain why. But it was built during the Roman era by Greeks living in Egypt, not by Egyptians. Because Egyptian civilization lasted 26 dynasties. The first zodiac in Egypt appeared 500 years after the final Egyptian dynasty. That's a problem. It's a problem for Graham Hancock. The Egyptians knew of no Zodiac. They didn't know of the 25,920-year cycle either. Both of these are creative license inventions of Graham Hancock, published in his books and said over and over in documentaries and interviews. Now, these, not just these statements, but even the false statements about the 9,000 years of Plato. He hides behind the fact that, yes, there was a genuine mistake by Plato saying it was 9,000 years. But in order to promote that today, Graham Hancock has to ignore all the academics and scholars who long before Jason was even born had already said that wasn't 9,000 years. It was corrected in Plato's day to 9,000 moons, which puts Atlantis story with the Sea People's Federation invasions of the Mediterranean in the 13th century BC. All of this has already been proven. Graham Hancock ignores it because it's not convenient to the narrative he has been hired to promote. This is where I'm going with this. This presentation on the Zodiac will collapse the entire Graham Hancock narrative and everybody who follows that BS. This goes way deeper than the fact that Graham Hancock got it wrong and the Egyptians never knew a Zodiac and they never knew a 25,920 year cycle for which you adopted a 12,000 year destruction cycle.
that you fit your ice age theory in. None of it's real. It's all invented. That's what we're going to get to in here after I drink this sip of coffee. Oh, I hope Don gets here pretty soon because that was the last cup in that pot. And other people's coffee always tastes better than the coffee you make for yourself. All right. Let's, let's get to this, guys. I don't even know how many people. Oh, we already got over 1,000 people. Out of, a, out of 1,100 people in the chat, can I get 100 people to email Graham Hancock's people and tell him, hey, man, this dude is really making you look bad. It's about time to bring him into the table or give him a voice or debate him. And I'm going to tell you now, y'all, you guys, you guys can always quote me. I promise you, Graham Hancock will never debate me. That's a promise. He's got way too much on the line because in one debate, I will dismantle his whole life's work to BS. So let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, I got some really interesting material here, such as the fact is in my excursions into, into Egyptology, because I used to be really fascinated with it. When I first, when my first book was published in 2006 called Lost Scriptures of Giza, I have devoted two chapters to the Egyptian theology. What the what is found, what is truly found in the Egyptian Book of the Dead? What's found in the coffin texts, what we find in the pyramid texts, what we find in the wall text, all the temples in Karnak, from Karnak, all, all throughout oh, Waset and, and Thebes. No, guys, this might hurt some of your feelings. There isn't a hint of the zodiac or any knowledge of the zodiacal signs in all of Egyptian history. Nothing. This gets deep, guys. It kind of makes you wonder who built who built the zodiac of, of Dendera and why. We already know the historical record tells us it was the Ptolemies. And when you research who the Ptolemies were, it was 500 years after Egypt fell. They were Greeks, descended from Macedon, but they built it during the Roman height, when Rome was at its height of power. A lot of things happened at this time, as we're going to see in this presentation. A lot of new things appeared in the world, all at the same time, during the height of Roman power. Remember, my brother Martin Leakey and I, and we have to include Max Egan, because even though Martin, Martin and I initiated the research and the revelations, Max Egan took it to another level and found proof after proof after proof that we were right concerning the Great Wall of China was actually built, funded, and protected by Romans, not the Chinese. Yeah, deep. We got those videos, guys. So, yeah, Marie Harris, I'm glad you came around because you used to be one of my critics. This is That's Marie Harris. She says, I followed Hancock for years. It was hard to hear that he was deliberately lying, but truth is truth, period. You're absolutely right. It's hard to hear. I loved Fingerprints of the Gods until 15 years later, I dissected it. My copy now looks like a Bible. I got things color-coded. I got all kinds of references. Yeah, you open up my copy of, of, of that book. Thank you. She just brought me my, she just brought me my, my notes. They are so well organized. I don't need them because I got them. I opened up another another screen. But this is what you're going to be downloading, guys. None of this. This is a sh this is like a coffin, sealed in lead. Going to sink this whole zodiac. It's all right here, and it's all free to you guys too. Because presentations are never never as good as the real product. This is the research. Everything you can look up for yourself. You'll be able to download this when this video is over with. But this is the business right here. It collapses almost the entire spectrum of, of narratives that are be pro, being promoted out there now. So let's get to it. <clears throat> the Egyptian coffin text, the pyramid text, the wall text, the entire collection of the ancient Egyptian book of life that was later retitled the book of the dead. Nothing, not a hint 
of a knowledge of the zodiac. Process that for a minute. Think about the level of deceit that has been promoted in Hollywood. Think about just how much of a connection in your mind has been created by Hollywood and the publishing industry. When you think of Egypt, you think of ancient Zodiac. When you think of the Zodiac and see the symbols, you're automatically thinking ancient Egyptian. You think there's a correlate there. It's been specifically planted in your mind, although there isn't a trace of connection between ancient Egypt and any knowledge of the Zodiac. Nothing. That's just the beginning. In all 26 Egyptian dynasties, nothing, not one, not one funerary, funerary, not one wall text coffin, nothing, not that, no, nothing in the reliefs, the bas relief, the hieroglyphs, the art, nothing. We see Egyptian astronomy and astrology, and it's very different. Nothing like the zodiac. So. The first zodiac appears in Egypt long after Egypt is gone and it now belongs to Rome. That's the first appearance of the zodiac when Egypt was Roman. 75 to 100 BC, Roman Egyptians descended from the Ptolemies who were who were Greeks. These are Grecianized Romans, northern Africa, who built this zodiac. It's very interesting, guys. It's very interesting, guys. So this led me to believe. This, this, this really had me befuddled at first. Um, I couldn't find, I spent, I spent days going through my library. I just, I couldn't find. I did this research last month and I had to process it the whole time I was on a trip. And I talked about it with the guys that were on my and, and the girls that were, we had conversations about this. And I openly added, you know what? It's just so unbelievable. I couldn't put this presentation together until I came back. And I, after I had processed all this information, because like I said, it goes, it, go, it, got, it goes far deeper. Screw Egypt. Egypt's out of the picture. If the Zodiac is real, we should find evidence of it in Sumer, right? In the Sumerian text, Sumerian tradition, Sumerian beliefs. We should find some evidence of it. What about in, in Akkadian? What about Babylonian? I know, I know of Babylonian astronomy. It's called the Mool Appen. Remember, I've told you guys in past presentations, the Babylonians were aware of the phoenix. It was called the Pin Deity, P-I-N. Mool Appen was a study of the stars, but it concerned also the phoenix. The Babylonians were fascinated with the Mool Appen. We have a version of the Mool Appen the Sumerian version developed after the, the collapse of the vapor canopy, after the great flood in Babylonian texts, we do have a type of Zodiac, but it's not like the one at Dendera. It has 18 constellations, not 12. It's very different. And the animals are different. The concepts are different. But the Babylonians were still fixated, though, on the same things the Egyptians were fixated on, which was the movements of Venus, the dog star Sirius, and the seven sisters and Orion. Seven sisters are the Pleiades. Almost every ancient civilization was focused on these, just like the Olmec, the Zapotec, the Quiche, Imera, the ancient ancestors of the Inca, the Maya, they were all focused on the seven sisters, the movements of Venus. They were, they were, they were watching Sirius, Orion, Arcturus, and they were very, very, very cognizant of the, of the motion of the moon. But none of these ancient civilizations gave a damn about the sun. None. Therefore, it is, this is why we do not find a zodiac in any of these civilizations. Let me reiterate that a little with a little more detail. So, the Epic of Gilgamesh 
I have read it. I read Samuel Noah Kramer's translation. I was so impressed that I, I hunted for a different translation of the, of the tablets of the Epic of Gilgamesh, and I came across a woman who I ended up loving her translations. I, I like the details she provides in the commentaries and footnotes. Her name is Maureen Gallery Kovacs. I read two different translations. You can easily find both of them online today. Samuel Noah Kramer and Marine Gallery Kovacs translated the Epic of Gilgamesh. There's not a hint of the Zodiac in that story. The Enema Elish, Seven Tablets of Babylonian Creation. It is a Babylonian cosmological text. Nothing. There's no Zodiac. There's no Zodiac anywhere in the Babylonian cosmographies. Why? How is that possible? So, the oldest tablets around, which have stories that parallel some of the biblical stories, are the Karsag tablets. Sorry, for those of you who haven't guessed it yet, there's no Zodiac in the Karsag tablets. There's no Zodiac in the Atrahasis epic, in the Adapa epic, in the Era epos, nothing. All these widely disseminated and translated into multiple different languages, these major epics of the ancient world that were taught as, as part of the syllabaries and that were taught and known by all the people. There's nothing about a zodiac or any of the signs of the zodiac in any of these traditions. That's a problem. More coffee. Woo. Dawn had to put, Dawn just came in. She's probably, she's probably monitoring the chat now. I don't know. Uh, she had to put down, she had to put a cat down. Oh, there she is. I'm sorry, Dawn. Her cat Raven is seven years old and she got cat leukemia. And I'm glad that, that Raven decided to hold out till Dawn got back. Cause she would have been devastated if the cat would have passed while we were gone. I'm glad that she got to spend three days with the cat and then gently put her down. So if she's not going, if she's not tending to the chat, then, you know, you guys know why now I can't really, I can't monitor the chat guys. I'm too busy. How do, how, how does my friends at uh truth mafia say it? What, what is uh, uh Tommy truthful and donut say some truth bombs. That's what I'm doing today, guys. It's all about them truth bombs. All right, so the Egyptian, the entire length of the Egyptian civilization, old king, we're talking about pre-dynastic, pre-dynastic, old kingdom, middle kingdom, new kingdom, post-kingdom, nothing about a zodiac. Might have something to do with why the Sumerians, Babylonians, A Akkadians, Assyrians, and Hittites didn't have a zodiac either. Yeah, this goes, this goes deep, guys. This goes deep. We're unraveling those threads of deception, these major threads of deception that have been woven into the publishing industry and all these popular authors. I'm going to name some of them. Andy Collins, Robert Schock, Robert Bobble, Graham Hancock. They've all worked together, guys. I don't know if all their material is, is misleading. I've read, the, I've read all their material. I don't know if it's all misleading. But I do know that they've all borrowed into this this material, and it's bullshit, total bullshit. And what I'm telling you as an assertion right now is not even going to sink into you until we get close to the end of this presentation. When you see for yourself the overwhelming amount of data about the non-existence of the Zodiac. Going through it. Going through it. So we've done, we've done, we've done the, we've done the Near East in in Egypt. There's nothing to find, guys. You can spend your whole life trying to find zodiacal information in Egypt and uh, and uh, uh, the Near East, and all you're going to get in all the encyclopedias and textbooks is say, yeah, the Egyptians did know the zodiac. There's a zodiac on the Temple of Dendera, but you got to do a deeper research to figure out the deception. 
because the Temple of Dendera wasn't built till 75 to 100 BC. And that was 500 years after the Egyptians were gone. It was built by Macedonian descended Greeks, the Ptolemies, during the Roman period. That means the Zodiac was not Egyptian. So, <clears throat> a real good analogy is the Saracens and the Arabs took Jerusalem and built the Dome of the Rock in the middle of Jerusalem. But that doesn't mean the people of Jerusalem are Muslim. All right. So, yeah, those are some pretty good facts right there about those epics. So, uh, remember, the Great Wall of China was a Roman. It was a Roman project. We've already excluded. We, uh, we have definitively shown what it was. It was the Amazon of the ancient world. Uh, um, Max Egan found, found the old shipping docks and the wharfs and the locks. I mean, he found the things that Martin and I only speculated on. He actually found them. He went to Google Earth, look, you could see underwater all the ancient piers. Listen, at the end of the Great Wall of China, hundreds of ships used to dock and unload their stuff, and it was sent all the way to Rome down the wall, all the way to the Middle East, all the way to the Caspian Sea in, in pieces of this Great Wall. That wall was a Roman construction called the Silk Road. Yeah. The interesting part is, is that construction began around 200 B.C., and most of it was done by 100 BC. It's 100 years of construction at the exact same time that the Zodiac of Dendera, built by Romans in Africa, was built. At the exact same time, according to Chinese scholars, that the Zodiac was introduced into the Han Dynasty. 100 BC. You just can't make this stuff up, guys. You can't make this stuff up. The Chinese admit that their Zodiac, which has 12 signs, which are all very, very different than the Zodiac uh, of, of, of uh, the West. Theirs has a dragon in it and snakes and a toad and a turtle and all kinds of things. But you know what? The Chinese Zodiac isn't old. Chinese scholars say that it came in it came into existence during the Han dynasty about 100 BC. And we know that's the dynasty that the Romans were doing business with. Uh, Julie Rogers, we're not going to confuse what I'm talking about, the 12, the 12 house zodiac with the older lunar zodiac which did have 13 signs. There, there were many different civilizations that had a lunar zodiac, but it was it's ju it came out at the same time as the solar ones did. It had 13 signs because it was lunar in nature. They never were very popular because the moon doesn't conform to that to that system. But uh, they did last for a little while. Some cultures tried to hold out on it, but it just ne it never took like like the twelve the twelve uh, partitioned uh, solar zodiac. They even tried to add a 13th one to the solar zodiac called a Ophiocles, the snake, or something like that. I can't remember. It, did, it didn't work either. They went back to 12. So anyway, uh, yeah, it's crazy, guys. China, China admits the they didn't have zodiac in the ancient world. All of a sudden, we had one of the, on the Han Dynasty when they had contact with Rome. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. So these things kind of got me to doing some research on India. Because I got several books in here, and I, I'm looking at all this stuff on India. Like, man, what's, what does India say about the Zodiac? Well, I'm going to tell you. The oldest Sanskrit text that we have on astrology dates from 270 A.D. Not B.C., guys. A.D. 17 centuries ago. Now, here's the humdinger. The name of the Sanskrit text from India is called the Yavan Ajataka. Yavan Ajataka. These are the two words. 
I recognize it as two words because I know what Yavin means. Yavin is the same as Javin in the Old Testament and in the book of Jasher. Javin is the ancestral name for the people that we call the Greeks. The name of this text in Sanskrit from 270 AD is Yavin Ajataka, which they say means the sayings of the Greeks. This is, according to Hindu scholars, the oldest Sanskrit text on astrology. It was, it was, it was knowledge that had been taken from the Greeks. We are told by all these modern authors over and over and over the high antiquity of the Hindu system and how the West borrowed everything. Well, that's not what we're finding at all. We're finding the West invented everything and then exported it out to everybody because that's what the Chinese said. And now that's what the people of India said. Montukla wrote that the Hindu zodiac was borrowed from the Greek. I didn't make that up. I got that from Montukla. Pay attention, guys. We have been told the exact opposite of the truth. So, as early as 1000 BC, there was a Sanskrit astronomical text. Remember, this is not astrology. The first astrological text in India was sayings of the Greeks, 270 AD. But the oldest Sanskrit astronomical text dates to 1000 BC. That's a long time ago, guys. It's called the Surya Siddhanta. I can't pronounce these right. I need my, my friends, the Krimis here, because, you know, they'll tell me, especially Chris. Chris Krimi's going to give me the biz, and she's going to tell me how to pronounce all these things. Fun, funny story about the Krimis. Let, let me tell you something really quick. Here's another thing that's gotten under my skin recently. The Krimis would probably tell me it's pronounced Surya Shidhanta. Because in Irish, the S-I-D-H is also she. Sur Surya Shidhanta. This ancient text from 1000 BC, there's not a hint of the zodiac. Nothing. This is ancient India, Sanskrit, all about the stars and astronomy. It's a textbook in Sanskrit, and there's nothing about the zodiac in it. It's crazy, guys. So let me get to the Krimis real quick. So there's this guy. I don't know anything about him, but he's attacked me so vehemently over and over and over. And finally, I have to ask, hey, man, who is this guy? What's his problem with me? I don't understand. And several people that were in his community jumped ship, and they came to Archaics, and they no longer pay 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 him and all that. And I found out, I said, well, what's going on? I said, well, I mean, you, you, got, you pay him $800, $900, and he takes you to this place way out in Kerrville. You can watch the stars, and he's an astrologer. And he I said, oh, okay, one of those guys. All right, so what's his deal with me? Why is he so pissed off at me? He said, well, he's, he says you stole the phoenix from him. Do you guys realize how stupid that sounds? An astrologer who's basically grifting people for a lot of money is mad at Jason of Archaics because I stole the phoenix from him. That's just moronic. It's moronic. The phoenix has been around for about 35 centuries in, in the literature. And the version that I bring to the table is the most ancient, that phoenix was a symbol for a cycle, was not a bird. Anyway, Robert Phoenix has now changed his name. I heard he's not going by Robert Phoenix no more. I don't know what he's going by. He can go, he can go by Robert Fakery for all I care because what he did offended me. Attacking me, I don't care. I've got trolls everywhere. But when I went to Asheville, I was taken in by the Krimis and they gave me a place to stay. And I said, you know what? I appreciate it. I have a hotel over here. I appreciate it. But thank you for taking my friends in. You didn't have to do that. But I'm going to go ahead and stay at the hotel. I've already paid for it. And... They said, well, come on over any time. So I took them up on that and I said, hey, check it out. You guys live in a beautiful place. I like the, I love the atmosphere here. I met Freeman Fry at their house. I met a lot of other YouTubers at their house. I didn't know these people had been to India and lived with the yogis and done all that. Yeah. So they're, they're authors. I have their books. I'm reading one right now. They, they've written books independently. They've written books together. And everybody knows them as the Krimis. They have a beautiful place in Asheville, North Carolina. 
and they were a part of Robert's group, and they were doing weekly shows with Robert Phoenix. And one day, I just said, hey, would you like, would you guys mind if I did a live show right here? I did a live show <coughs> in their sunroom. And they were there and they participated. And I turned the camera and let them talk. When Robert Phoenix found out that the Krimis were on Archaics, because you guys have seen them. Many of you have seen them in my, on my channel. Two older people, beautiful souls. As soon as he found out, he dropped them like a bad habit. No more weekly shows with the Krimis. To me, that's pedantic. To me, you exposed your soul, what you really are. You're a grifter. Yeah, man. Anybody, anybody see Robert Phoenix out there? Watch out, because he's trying to dig in your wallet. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah, man. All right. Yeah, Sherry Lives. You can go and get that. You can get that troll out of the. Uh, get the. Yeah, one of my moderators. Go ahead and block that person, Sherry. L Sherry Ives. Get him out of my chat. Yeah. You're not gonna accuse the Krimis of stealing information from others. I ain't trying to hear that. All you all, all you Robert Phoenix trolls, you're not gonna make it here. You're not gonna make it here. He's just one. He's just one though. He's just one individual that that, that is set his sights on me. It's well, it's it's ridiculous. It's very childish. And let's get through this presentation. Because by the time I'm done with this presentation, any reasonably intelligent trier of fact will understand that the whole astrology zodiac deal is a house of cards. And I'll explain that in a minute. It has nothing to do with the system. Everything always has everything to do with the individual. There's all kinds of different systems, but it takes a special soul to be a medium. It takes a special soul to be a channeler. It takes a special soul to be someone who can divine things. The system itself is unimportant. And when it comes to astrology and the zodiac, it's not even old. So we're going to get to that here. Yeah, man, it's crazy. It's crazy, guys. Yeah, man, that dude Robert Phoenix owes me an apology. I'm never going to get it, but yeah, he, he owes me an apology, man. I'm, I'm dead serious. He's literally told people in his community that uh, uh, he wouldn't trust his kids around me. He's made statements like that. Uh, he has pulled up my criminal history and tried to show it to anybody who will who, see it. So in Robert Phoenix's world, 17-year-old kids can't make mistakes. You are eternally damned. So I've got no patience for people like that. He's not welcome in my community. And already a bunch of people in his community have come to mind. And they're more than welcome here. Just leave that Robert Phoenix shit at the door. So anyway, moving on. India. <clears throat> in India. I thought it was really, really interesting that so I'm asking friends, I'm sending emails to different people. I'm saying, hey, man, I can't get this wrong. I know you guys are more qualified to know this than me, but I have read the Bhagavad Gita. I've read all about Arjuna. And I remember reading uh, the Great War and the Mahabharata. I, I don't remember all the details, but when I was in prison, I studied these books. And I was the, but I was the most fast, not with the Bhagavad Gita, not with the Mahabharata. The one that fascinated me the most because the, because of the Babylonian crossover was the Ramayana. And I remember studying these in prison. And in retrospect, when I was doing this research, it dawned on me. There isn't an effing reference to the Zodiac in any of these three ancient Indian epics. For Graham Hancock, that's a problem. That's a problem. So, yeah, I, I was really shocked by that revelation. None. You're, you're welcome, Debbie Steele. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I, I just, I, I'm really, I'm really speaking up. I'm really speaking up for those he's hurt by kicking them out of his community and by, by talking back behind their backs, all because they associate with me now. I, 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 I got thick skin. There ain't nothing that man or anybody can do to hurt me. I'm really speaking up on in behalf of those that he's affected negatively and used me to do it. I ain't cool with that. I ain't cool with that at all. Lisa Lambert, you just told the truth. 
You just told the truth in that. Astrology is the same age as the Bible. Problem is, I don't know how old you think the Bible is, but I'm going to reveal it to you in this deal. You may not like the answer. <laughs> Operation Rug Pull. I need to make you if, you, if you, if you didn't fly out the mouth so much, you know what I'm talking about, Rug Pull. If you didn't fly off at the, at the tongue so much, I'd give you a blue wrench as much as you've been in my community for how long, man. But you are, you are a loose cannon, bro. You're a loose cannon, man. I don't know yet. Tim Cleary, we're not we're not talking about the lunar. We're talking about the zodiac, which is which is a a sun based system. There are old old lunar zodiacs, but that's because the vapor canopy during the vapor canopy, lunar systems were thriving. There were so many different kinds. There were all kinds of of moon wheels that were in existence back then. I'm talking about the twelve houses of the sun of the of the solar zodiac that it, that we use today. Matter of fact, let's look. At this right here. You guys are real familiar with it. I know you guys are real familiar with that. This is the Zodiac. This is what we're talking about. This is what we're told in modern publishing is very, very ancient. Taurus, Gemini, Aries. All this right here. Thank, thank you, babe. All this is what we're told. It's very, very ancient. And this is the subject matter of this video. We're going to do a different video on the lunar zodiacs because the lunar zodiacs actually prove my case more. The ancient civilizations agreed on one thing. The moon is older than the sun. Remember, guys, 2239 BC, the collapse of the vapor canopy, the sun first appeared. That's when the patriarchy took over. That's when the lunar systems all collapsed. But this, this is my tarot deck. It's in here. We're going to get into tarot right here in a minute. Because you, you need to understand something about tarot. It'll blow your mind. <coughs> All right. <coughs> anyway. Maurice, yeah, Maurice Demers. He knows all about that Robert Phoenix deal. How they did the Krimis wrong. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, and, I, and it was at the same time I met Freeman Fry, who was like a pioneer of the truther movement way back in the day, man. I met that guy. thought that was pretty cool. He's more than welcome to come on my channel, too, if you ever wants to talk about anything. Yeah, he's an old school truther. But he was kicking it with the Krimis, too. More than a year. J.P. Weld. I really appreciate that. Really appreciate that. We'll go to good use in the Archaics Library. All right, cool. So that's India. Nothing. Ramayana, Bhagavad Gita, Mahabharata, nothing. 3,000-year-old Sanskrit Hindu, or a Hindu text on ancient astronomy in India. Surya Shidhanta, not a hint of the Zodiac. That should tell you something. What about the Americas? What about the Americas, guys? You guys know when it comes to deciphering ancient calendrical systems, I'm pretty damn good at it. What about the Maya? The Maya believed in 13 heavens, and each heaven was ruled by an epic. Each epic, each epic was 144,000 turnings of the stars. That's days. That's 400 years on a 360-day count system. The Mayan system, according to scholars, is 1,872,000 days. That's perfectly divisible by 13 as 144,000 days times 13. So the Maya don't seem to know a zodiac. There are no Mayan stelae. There's no Mayan reliefs, no Mayan temples, anything. There's not a hint of a knowledge of a zodiac in the Mayan traditions, the Olmec traditions, 
the Zap the Zapotec, the Quiche, the Aymara of ancient Peru, South America. Not one hint of a zodiac in the 300 and something subcultural families of the North, North American Native Americans. The Algon Queen, Cherokee, Seminole, all of them. Not a hint of a knowledge of a zodiac. Nothing. Unusual. So, we have the Japanese tradition, especially of Nihon Shoki. Nothing. Not a hint of the zodiac. Just like the Chinese. China, the Chinese don't have a hint of the zodiac either until the Han Dynasty, which was at the height of Roman power when China had contact with Rome. We know they did because they both worked together on the Silk Road Amazon program they had going on, moving merchandise across the continent of Asia. So, who <clears throat> knows? Now, in my, in my sojourn through the Pacific, through David Hatcher Childress's work, and Thor Heyerdahl's work, and several other old pioneers. I read all of Cook's logs. Listen, guys, nothing. The Melanesians, Polynesians, Micronesians, Pacific Islanders, Easter Island Islanders, Northern Pacific, the Hawaiians, none of the Pacific groups. And all they had was stellar theologies. That's all they had. They're way out there in the middle of nowhere. The stars in the night sky were seen by these people so well. Not a hint of a knowledge of the Zodiac. That's a problem for Graham Hancock. Now, I'm really going to get into something that's it's a, this is, this is, this right here is going to get deep. In the entire Old Testament, Genesis through Malachi, not a hint of the Zodiac. It's not there. The Torah, the Tanakh, the Talmud, the Midrashic commentaries. Guys. Let this sink in. Nowhere in ancient Jewish literature do you find a knowledge or recognition of the Zodiac. That's a problem. Okay. You guys remember, I provide these PDFs so you can do your own follow-up research. Yeah. Don't don't come back to archaics arguing that Moses Maimonides wrote all about the zodiac. He 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 wrote about it here. He 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 defined all 12 signs. No. You need to pay attention to the facts as I give them. I said no ancient Jewish texts mention a zodiac. And what I mean is there is no references in the Talmud, in the Midrashic text, in the in the Torah, the Tanakh, the Bible. There is no zodiac in the Old Testament. Moses Maimonides lived 900 years ago. By that time, the zodiac was already 900 years old. We'll get to that in a minute. So, There's a long list of authors who wrote about astronomy, about star theology, about comets, about movements of, of the stars, different belief systems. They made reference to, to, to uh, other people's beliefs. There's a whole list of authors that should have said something about the Zodiac. Something. But not one of them did. Let me read that list to you. Babylonian priest historian Barosis, who studied at the Alexandrian Library, he didn't write about it. <clears throat> what about Manatho? We cited Manatho many times. There's not a hint of a, any knowledge of a zodiac in Manatho's writings. He's an Egyptian. He's an Egyptian writer in the Greek period. 
What about some of y'all's favorites? Some of y'all love to, love to cite Flavius Josephus. Love to talk about Flavius Josephus. I've read Appian Way. I've read War of the Jews. I've read Antiquities. Nothing. There's no reference to a Zodiac. Josephus did not know of a Zodiac at all. This was unknown to the Jewish writer, Josephus. <coughs> so, oh yeah, this is going to get deep, guys. One of my favorites, oh, I have his book too. I have his book too. Herodotus of Halicarnassus. Sorry, guys, I'm really disorganized right now. I got three more books from William Corliss on my trip to New Mexico that were loaned to me. You guys saw her. Uh, I'm not going to name her, but you guys saw her at the restaurant with us in the pictures that we posted on Facebook and YouTube. But she she found three William Corliss books, and I have them right here. Amazing books. We're gonna get. We're gonna do videos out of these. I told you guys about William Corliss, biological anomalies in humans. Ancient man, a handbook of puzzling artifacts. One of my favorite books in prison. It is amazing. The incredible things that were found all over the world that you won't find. People aren't even talking about these things on YouTube channels. <coughs> Neglected geological anomalies. I love William Cordes. I've already done two videos on his stuff. We got more coming now. All right, check this out. Thank you. All right, now, excuse me. <clears throat> Let's get over here, guys, to 1000 BC Phoenician historian Sankuniathan wrote a very compelling, interesting history in the pre-Greek times of the unfolding of ancient events, not a hint of a knowledge of the Zodiac. <clears throat> Livy, Roman historian. You guys know I love my Pliny the Elder. Pliny the Elder wrote natural history. He wrote all about the stars. Nowhere in Pliny's works does he mention a zodiac. Strabo. <clears throat> Strabo was a Greek geographer. I read his material. He also wrote about the Great Pyramid. Not a hint about the zodiac is anywhere in. Strabo's material. His counterpart, equally intelligent and prolific in his writings, was Diodorus Siculus. Nothing about the Zodiac at all. We have these writings. Nothing. Thales of Miletus, who predicted the phoenix darkening the sun in 583 BC during the great battle between the Medes and the Lydians that started a peace treaty that is recorded today at the monument called Yasilikaya, which shows the kings of the opposing armies forging an a, a alliance after five years of warfare with each other. And in their hands, they both hold an eclipsed sun, not a normal eclipse, something else darkened the sun. Mara Cakes, veterans know what that was. It wasn't the moon. Thales of Miletus, no mention of a Zodiac. Anaxagoras, Anaximander, there is no mention of a Zodiac. Thucydides, Thucydides recorded everything. He's like Herodotus, except he specialized on the military campaign that him and his men went on. Nothing. Not a hint of a Zodiac. Hipparchus, nothing. Here's where it gets weird, guys. Here's where it gets really weird. <coughs> Shivites Jagnarth, no. There were ancient Greeks who said that there was 1080 stars in the firmament, but they got their mis they got their mis they was mistaken. Older Greeks like Hipparchus said that there was 10,800 fixed stars, and then all the other stars moved a little bit. 
<clears throat> it's the number that's important <clears throat> and the fact that it's attached to the ideal luminaries. You guys know the Great Pyramid is attached to the number two, 1080. So <clears throat> here's where it gets just so weird. We know of the Trojan War through the writings of Homer, 800 years B.C. Homer emerged as the first of the great Greek epic writers after a 300-year Dark Age. Remember, guys, I've already gone into all the details about the Dark Age caused by the Phoenix in 1135 B.C. in the final year of Pharaoh Segnocti. This is what happened, guys. Homer wrote an epic called the Iliad. It is absolutely packed, full of data. There's not a single hint of a knowledge of a zodiac anywhere in the in Homer's Iliad. And for those who want to make sure that Homer truly didn't know that there was a zodiac, you might want to read the Odyssey. Because in the Odyssey, all about Odysseus, you'll also find there's no knowledge of a zodiac in the Odyssey. It's not there. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> since you know that, then it shouldn't be a problem for you to digest that the next Greek writer who appeared about the same time was Hesiod, and he wrote Theogony. Theogony was the religion of, of, of the Greeks, all the religion, the, the gods and stars, nothing. Nothing about the Zodiac is in Theogony. That's a problem. So <clears throat> you would think that since Hesiod wrote the first, like, you know, farmer's almanac, it's called Works and Days by Hesiod. Nothing. There's nothing in there about a zodiac. No way to measure time. No 12 houses of the sun. No, no, no Libra, Gemini, Aquarius, Scorpion, none of that. It's not there. The great Greek epic writers did not know of a zodiac. That's a problem. <clears throat> so <clears throat> another one we should take into consideration is Theognis Theognis was a prolific writer as well we don't have a lot of his, all of his writings but we do have one huge epic nothing, no zodiac we have Lucretius who wrote about the phoenix, who wrote about the resets, who wrote about the history of the world was one that is measured in earthquakes. He, Lucretius even wrote about this, that an object at fixed times darkens the sun and is unknown to astronomy because of the irregularity of its appearance. Lucretius wrote that. Lucretius wrote on the origin of the universe. It is 7,300 lines. There's not a hint in Lucretius that he had any knowledge of a zodiac. Do you think all these Greek, Greek, ancient Greek writers would have omitted something that would have been so easy to weave into their narratives? Yeah, I don't. I don't. Posidonius, nothing. Aristarchus, nothing. Crantor, nothing. What about Virgil? He wrote the Aeneid. He was a Roman. He wrote this epic poem in the Greek style. Nothing. No Zodiac. Aristophanes wrote the birds and other, other stage plays. No, nothing. No Zodiac. So, <clears throat> what about the ultimate source for Atlantis? Graham Hancock loves to quote Plato's 9,000 years uh, uh, before Solon, even though it's all it was 9,000 moons. But he loves to quote Plato. I wonder if Graham Hancock knows that Plato never once mentioned the Zodiac. <clears throat> it's crazy. Which, 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 I mean... Then it, with Plato not knowing of the Zodiac, it, it takes away the mystery of Aristotle not knowing of the Zodiac either, because that was his student. Aristotle wrote posterior analytics in many other very technical texts, but he wrote about the stars, he wrote about nature, but he didn't write about the Zodiac. So... 
So <clears throat> I, I can already see people trying to process this information and wrap this new information around, you know, their paradigm. Uh, a case in point. <clears throat> uh, she's not wrong. The Zodiac is in everything via symbology and metaphor, though. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. But it's all ex post facto. I'll get to that in a minute. Because I'm going to show you where the Zodiac came from. So we've listed all these ancient authors, all these ancient epics, these ancient texts, all these civilizations that are supposed to be super old, like the Egyptians, the Chinese, the, the people of India. Nothing. No Zodiac, guys. Tacitus, Plutarch, Marcus Varro, Seneca, Cicero. Guys, the list goes on. I can't name them all. I would have to name every single writer of the ancient world. I'm not going to do that. I just named a bunch of them for an example. For an example. So, <clears throat> if that's the case, let's get into the Greeks. Let's see what the Greeks knew. This is where it gets just twilight zone. I just know what to say. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to coin a word. Twilight zone-ish right now. So it's not in my interest for you to interpret these facts the way I do. That's not in my interest. It's in my interest that you have these facts because maybe you're able to see something I'm not seeing, but I'm giving you the business. I'm giving you the facts right now. And this is a real problem for all these modern books that are all over the shelves trying to tell you about 11,000 600 years uh, ago that are trying to tell you that something happened 9,600 years ago that are trying to tell you about a younger Dryas period. Oh yeah, guys, the exposing the Zodiac completely collapses the lie of Graham Hancock concerning that one place I can never say, Gobekli Tepe, Tepe, that place there. Yeah, guys, we're going to get to that too. <coughs> <clears throat> so, you you guys already know when it comes to Nassos, when it comes when it comes to the Minoan civilization, yeah, on Crete, Thera, yeah, all the way spread across across uh, uh, Santorini. You already know, guys. I know my business. There was no Minoan zodiac. There was no Mycenaean zodiac. Did not exist. Argos had no zodiac. None of those ancient pre-Greek civilizations had any type of zodiac. It was unknown. Nothing. In fact, according to scholars, there are no ancient Greek depictions of anything related to the zodiac until about 100 BC. There's that date again. Same thing the Chinese said. Same thing the Romans. Remember, Dendera. In Egypt, Zodiac first appears, same date. <clears throat> now, I'm going to need you guys to really process this. I'm even going to say it twice. I'm going to say it twice. Because the first time I say this, it's not you're not going to process this. Most of you are, gonna, are not going to understand the depth and gravity of this statement. But I'm telling you right now, in the whole of all Greek mythology, Hundreds of anecdotes, hundreds of stories about all the heroes, Hercules, God, Zeus, the Olympians, all of them. In the whole of Greek mythology, there isn't a single story that features the Zodiac. None of them. It's not mentioned anywhere. What did Jason just say? Jason just told you that... In the whole of Greek mythology, there are no stories that depict the Zodiac. None. I'll let you process that for a minute before I go into the next series of facts. 1449 in the chat. Thank you, guys. 
I got half of that in likes, but that's okay because likes don't even affect the algorithm. It's just an ego thing. <clears throat> All right, guys. <clears throat> Remember, I have a video that explains to you how the Oracle of Dodona, how the Oracle of Delphi, how the or Oracle of Pythia, how the Oracle at Olympia ran. These ancient oracles were in was a vast, very well put together intelligence operation. Remember, I have a whole video explaining how it all worked. They are not divining. They were not predicting the future. They weren't doing anything. <clears throat> We have enough fragments from all the ancient Greek writers that told us how these oracles work for us to put it together. And we know now that when people came and gave their treasures, gifts, money, wealth, goats, herds, and they came and they offered it to the, the, the oracle, they were always made to wait three to seven days, sometimes 14 days. The oracle, depending upon the nature of the question. The oracle would make them wait. But on a daily basis, runners from oracle to oracle were, were trading intelligence. On a daily basis, a runner would make it to the Dodona oracle. And the priests would secretly go through all the dispatches. And they would see everything that was being recorded in the other five or six oracles. They had intelligence from every region, even information about what was going on outside of Greece. Agents of the oracles were, were hanging out at all the shipyards and ports and all, all the places where sojourners and travelers occupied. Yeah, they would go out and routinely get, give a copper or they would buy a, they would buy somebody some water or some cheese or some bread or wine and then just to give them news from overseas. Hey man, what's going on in Carthage? What's going on over there in Joppa? Hey, I, he I heard things weren't going well in Egypt. What's happening? They were trained to do this. Information, tremendous, tremendous amounts of data were being filtered to the oracles and even from the other oracles because the oracles were getting information that nobody had. Because in order to question the goddess, in order to bring your inquiry into the oracle, the oracular priest had, had sold you some bullshit that you had to come with clean hands. And that means you had to divulge everything that you knew about what you were asking. And they would take this information and send it to all the other oracles. This is what's happening over here in Anatolia. This is what's happening over here in Ionia. The city of the city of the city of Mytilene is going through some chaos, and they got a lot of migrants and problems. And things are about to collapse over there. And then another oracle would find out that a banker in Mytilene was thinking about pulling all his holdings out and was asking the goddess if that was a good idea. And then another oracle would have would have information from a Macedonian who was already in league with Thracians who were talking about raiding the city of Mytilene and if the goddess was going to give them license to do that. Nothing divine here. Nothing supernatural. The oracles of the ancient Greek world were intelligence operations. And that's how they flee. That's how they made their money. They were very good at what they did. Now, <clears throat> the reason I'm telling you this, <clears throat> I'm calling to your attention this video I did a year ago, is because the oracles of Dodona, Pythia, Olympia, uh, what's another one? Uh, Oh, the most famous one, the Oracle of Delphi. Yeah, guys. Not a hint of the Zodiac at those temples has been found. No artwork, no anything. There are no traditions concerning uh, any of the oracles even using the Zodiac to divine anything. That was not done because the Zodiac was unknown when those oracles were in operation. And when those oracles had given their books over to keepers after the fall of those oracles and the, and the oracles had been raided by Roman armies, yeah, guys, until Rome surfaced, those oracles were considered holy ground and foreign. Even the Persians didn't sack the, the oracular temples. But the Romans did. 
up until the Romans. <laughs> Excuse me. And that's when, that's when the Sibyls put all their knowledge into, into books, in the Sibylline, the Sibylline oracles, in the, in the books of the Sibyl became a thing. There were copies of it in the Roman Senate. But in the books of the Sibyls, there's no mention of a Zodiac. <clears throat> That's a problem. Okay, so we have, <clears throat> of all the ancient Greeks, we have more information through Callisthenes and others about the life of Alexander, the, uh, Alexander of Macedon, who finally sat on the throne of Babylon and became Alexander the Great. We have more data about him than anybody else. And guess what, guys? Nothing. Nothing from the 3rd and 4th century B.C about a knowledge of the Zodiac. Nowhere in any of those traditions. That's embarrassing. That's totally embarrassing. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> but we're going to get to the Zodiac. I'm going to tell you exactly where it came from. Oh, I don't care if they unsub because if somebody disagrees with me and they unsub, I don't even care. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Doesn't even matter. What what what's really what really amuses me is that you stuck around long enough to tell us you were gonna unsub. Man, just go. Just get out of here. So naturally. If you're going to go through the ancient civilization, you're going to go through the ancient ancient epics, go through the ancient literature, all the ancient authors, and you don't find any references to a zodiac at all, then quite naturally, I'm going to, I'm going to keep going. So where do I go? I go to the early church fathers. I want to see who knew about a zodiac. So check this out. Three of the earliest church fathers. This is, this is also crazy, guys are Clement of Rome and Polycarp. Those are two right there, but they don't mention a Zodiac. Of all the things that they complain about, they don't mention a Zodiac. But I'll tell you who does. Uh, Tatian the Syrian. 170 AD, Tatian the Syrian mentions the Zodiac in passing in that it is demonic in origin, but he doesn't say anything else. He is the very first time that a Christian author mentioned the Zodiac in the Anno Domini period, AD period. Jesus was supposed to have been crucified in 33 AD. This makes, this makes almost 140 years later, this makes uh, Tatian the Syrian that the Zodiac is men mentioned into the Christian narrative. So <clears throat> what's interesting is that it's still within 250 years of the appearance of the first Zodiac in Egypt, the Greek Zodiac at Dendera, Ta the, the citation by Tatian, Tatian the Syrian. But, what, but, but of the early church fathers, we have a problem because there was a man named Irenaeus. Some people pronounce it Irenaeus. Irenaeus, Irenaeus, whatever, of Lyons of Gaul. About 175 uh, A.D., he wrote a book. And I'm going to have to correct that real quick. He wrote a book called Against Heresies. Irenaeus, the church father in 175 A.D., wrote a book against heresies that listed all the things that were heretical, that were against the church, against God, that were demonic. Nowhere in that list is the Zodiac mentioned. So Tatian the Syrian at the same time knew about the, a Zodiac, but doesn't say much about it. If Tatian the Syrian's uh, book is even legitimate. You got you to understand, guys, I'm giving it face value because there are scholars who claim that a lot of the Christian, the early Christian uh, records, we don't have any of them today. We're just taking it on the faith 
that the Roman church had accurate copies because all we have are the copies. We don't have any originals. So, yeah, Rome could have made up all that. We don't know. <clears throat> it's all interesting, though. But I'm going to drop a couple bombs on you real quick because that's that's what I do. And it's time. And I enjoy it. I enjoy the reactions. I'm going to watch this comment thread real, right here because here's some here's something that you need to know. There are no references to the Zodiac in the Dead Sea Scrolls. I'm going to let you think about that for a minute. Then I'm going to hit you with another one. Okay. <clears throat> Lorene de Amour. I'm not arguing that. I'm not talking. Don't, don't confuse the two. I am not launching an attack against astrology. I am merely offering evidence that the true science of astrology, which is ancient, was very recently hijacked and put into this construct. This is not old. This is deceitful. The astrologies of the ancients was far purer. This is an artificial version imposed on something far more ancient. Now, <clears throat> Don, if you're listening, would you please bring me my, my, my laptop cord? I, I exchanged laptops to get this video to go. I, that's why I was late on this video. The other laptop is malfunctioning, so I, I'm using my good laptop. I need the power cable. It's in the kitchen. All right, guys. Dead Sea Scrolls, not a hint of the Zodiac. Now, there's another collection of ancient scrolls and books that was found almost at the same time as the Dead Sea Scrolls. As a matter of fact, it consists of 52 documents from ancient Egypt. The Christian cops, the students of the Gnosis. It's called the Nag Hammadi Library. Thank you. It's called the Nag Hammadi Library. Over 1,200 pages of data. Some of you might know that more than I do. Somebody might correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't remember anything in the Nag Hammadi codices of a Zodiac. I don't remember any text talking about the Zodiac. I don't remember any references to the Zodiac. Um, I have several texts from the Nag Hammadi Library here, and I flipped through them. I couldn't find anything, but I did read them all that were available in English about 10 years ago. I don't remember any. Maybe some of you can do your own homework and correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't remember any, any zodiacal information in the Nag Hammadi texts. And if that's true, that's terrible. It's getting terrible. I don't know what this is, but you got to get unplugged. All right. Y'all excuse me for a minute while I set everything up, get all this stuff done. All right. <clears throat> I don't even know if that's going to that's gonna work. There it is. Cool. All right. So, now, for those of you who don't know, you, you can try and list examples of how stories are metaphors or examples of the Zodiac, but the actual Zodiac itself, there's no reference in the Old Testament to the Zodiac. It's not there. It's not there. As a matter of fact, there's no reference to the Zodiac in the New Testament as well, but the New Testament is an anomaly. And you have an argument there. We're going to get to that in a minute. Some of you guys really, really like the book of Enoch. There's no reference to the Zodiac in the book of Enoch. So. I 
I'm sorry, Plain Decoded. There are hundreds of books that talk about the Maseroth in the Old Testament mentioned in the book of Job. But if you, you need to do a study on that word, the book of Maseroth, because even scholars disagree. They don't know what it means, but it doesn't even matter if it does mean signs, because much of the older scholarly work on the word Maseroth specifically translates it as constellations or star groups. That's not a reference to the Zodiac, my brother, at all. If the Old Testament, if the Old Testament has so many books divided by hundreds, maybe even a thousand chapters, hundreds of thousands of words, and yet there's no description anywhere of the 12 houses of the sun and what those 12 houses are. There's no zodiac. So your argument falls on the fact that there's only one word in the Old Testament that might refer to the zodiac, and it's Maseroth. But even scholars claim that it doesn't, it's not zodiac, it's just a reference to stars. Yeah, that's not, that doesn't qualify, my brother. <clears throat> it doesn't matter if zodiac is a Greek word meaning animal circle in Hebrew. It doesn't, none of that matters. There is no description of the zodiac anywhere in the Old Testament. You can cling to all these little uh, splitting hairs that you want, but the teaching of the zodiac, a description of the zodiac is nowhere in the Bible. None. You can argue all you can argue all you want to. Every bit of it. It's not there. Book of Enoch. There is no zodiac in the book of Enoch. <clears throat> There's a whole lot of books, books that make those cognitive leaps. And they try to extrapolate more data than is actually presented. Yeah, it's it's crazy. A whole bunch of them. So the first fact that we need to get to is that the Zodiac appeared during the Roman period. But it is completely based off of Greek themes and symbols. Yeah, a lot of the Greek themes and symbols were derived from the Near East, Mesopotamia. So, if the Zodiac was so important in the ancient world, why have we not found any representations on frescoes, on walls, on statuary, on, on stelae? Why are there no Zodiac statues, monuments, temple, oracular fields that have 12, 12 uh, uh, statues of what the individual uh, deal, uh, zodiacal signs are? If the Zodiac was so special, why did the entire ancient world ignore it? Why? This is something that needs to be said. It's even deeper than that. Why do we have no legends, no traditions, nothing from any, we don't have any legends or traditions from China, from Egypt, from India, from the Near East, Sumer, Harappa, Indus Valley, the, the Maya, South America, North, we don't have any traditions, legends, nothing. Nothing. You can't go to a library and buy a book about legends and myths of the Zodiac. You know, you, you can't find it. Not unless it was recently printed using all new data, because prior to 100 BC, it seems like the entire world did not know what a zodiac was. And for those of you who you want who you want to be really specific, this model was an unknown to the entire world until about 75 BC. This model, this is your zodiac. This model was unknown to the whole world. So we have a problem. So what was known? What is the common denominators between all these civilizations that didn't know a zodiac, that didn't follow Taurus, Gemini, Leo, Le uh, Libra, Sagittarius, Scorpio, Cancer? All these, all these constellations, these horoscope images, all these ancient civilizations didn't know. What did they know? You know what they knew? They had Venus almanacs. They followed the movements of Venus. They followed the dog star. They had different names for Sirius. 
They were very interested in the movement of the seven sisters, the seven Pleiades. Orion, the hunter, was known to all civilizations. Arcturus, they all knew about the great bear overcoming the dragon. Draco constellation, pole shift, moved Alpha Draconis to the great bear. Now, the central star in the whole stellar sphere that didn't move, it used to be Alpha Draconis, the eye of the dragon. And the dragon was long, and, uh, and the length of the dragon covered a third of the stars of the circumpolar heavens. But then one day, the dragon fell. And when the dragon fell, the waters broke. When the waters broke, the age of darkness ended. The great flood collapsed the vapor canopy, and the sun was born. And then all the sun calendars started, which I've already documented at at uh, just just I, I've already documented that too much. It's in my Phoenix playlist. So that's the astronomy. That's the astronomy of the ancient world. That's what they paid attention to. They didn't know or care about this BS at all. None of this is known in the ancient world at all. So who invented it? <clears throat> uh, DJ. Nick X1, I'm so busy presenting novel, newer and newer and newer material as I discover it and put it with my old research. It just takes time out of my life to sit here and write books debunking people. But you can do it. Anybody can go through all of my 540 videos and my, my dozen or so published books. Anybody can go in there and pull out Graham Hancock, Randall Carson Steele, Andy, Andrew Collins' work, uh, all these ancient alien theorists. Anybody can, can use my material, put together a book, you know, just cite Jason and Archaic. Say, hey, man, this is what Jason said. Here's what he cited. Here's his source materials. And it completely, it completely collapses all this narrative. Anybody can do that. I can too. I'm just too busy steadily putting out more and more material. Now, you know, if my channel gets taken off of YouTube sometime, that's probably exactly what I'm going to do. I'll have so much free time, I might just write books just dissecting all the Hancock stuff and just showing the entire world that the man not only got all the facts wrong, but he knew he was publishing misinformation. Yeah, and I would probably just just to be creative, I would probably all do all that just out of his own bibliographies. But until that time happens, I'm going to continue to release more videos, which takes time. Continue to release more and more because I already know what's happening. If my channel ever does disappear, all my videos are still recorded. I put them all on Archaics TV. But I also, I'm also aware of about 40 different people who copy all my videos. They do it to keep them preserved. And as soon as they appear on YouTube, they're already, they're already copying onto hard drives, making sure that the, this material will always be available. Yeah, anything ever happens to Jason? Oh my God, the world is going to get flooded because so many people are just start releasing videos everywhere on all the platforms. And I'm cool with that. So, so yeah, I don't have time for that, man. <clears throat> so let's see. That's the astrology, guys. And the common denominator between all these civilizations is that they believe the moon was older than the sun. Remember, it was from the perspective of vapor canopy obscuring the sun. But at nighttime, the vapor canopy diffused. It watered the world every morning and every night. And when it did, the remaining moisture in the mesosphere created a lens effect that magnified the stars, made the moon even bigger. But as the sun appeared on the horizon, all that moisture went back up. The moisture, the moisture cloud, it turned into a cloudy substance uh, in the mesosphere, and it blocked out the sun. It created a vapor canopy. It was day every single day. This is why all the old calendars in the world were day count systems, and they considered they considered the nighttime as the first part of the day. Yeah, even in Genesis, you find the evening and the morning was the first day. Then God created mankind, man, man and woman created He them, and the sixth day. 
And the evening and the morning was the sixth day. And then God looked around and knew everything he'd done was good. And the seventh day, the evening and the morning was the seventh day. That's how it reads. All right, cool. So let's. So, <clears throat> so we get to this guy in 175 AD. 175 AD, we get to this astronomer who's known. He's well known for for his book like Almagast. He's real. He's real good. He's well known for his book on astronomy. He puts a book out. He studies at the Alexandrian Library in Egypt. He puts out this book on astronomy. Everybody knows who he is. And a few years later, he publishes a second book. The second book is where all this madness started. The second book is called Tetra Biblos. And it means the four books. And in Alexandria, Egypt, as he's writing Tetra Biblos, Someone else is writing four other books in Rome. They're Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Tetrabiblos. Now, this dude, Ptolemy, is he is the origin of the idea that each zodiacal house was 30 degrees. Therefore, it's 360 degrees all the way around. This model you see here has no precedent outside of Ptolemy. This is Ptolemy's Tetrabiblos model of the, of the Zodiac. This is his shit. This is it. Suddenly, at the same time that academia we're talking about 18 centuries ago, has a new model that has all these attachments to it. At the same time, academia has this cipher, has this Cracker Jack pocket decoder. As soon as the world receives this decoder, The world also receives Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The exact same time. Now, in my Dark Scriptures playlist, we don't have time to go through that in this video. But in my Dark Scriptures playlist, I, I show you how the New Testament was written, what it says, and what it doesn't say at all. And for the first time in history, Remember, guys, there is not a hint of the Zodiac in all of Greek mythology. And yet the Zodiac is very Greek. So we have, we, have, we have a very unique situation because with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the stories begin to take on Zodiacal proportions. Many things in the New Testament mirror the ideas and concepts of the Zodiac. Even... Even the identities, acts, and names of the of 12 apostles. Yeah, guys, it's all. This isn't me. You, you got to go back to original materials like the research of Gerald Massey. He wrote four huge books called Natural Genesis, Volume 1 and 2, and Ancient Egypt, Light of the World, of Volume 1 and 2. All four, all four books combined are about this big. Just, it's a coincidence that it's four books, but it, it's about a stack this big. And uh, Gerald Massey. He published these in the 1880s, and he literally goes through the New Testament and shows you it's a Zodiac code all the way through it. That's a problem. So, Tetrabiblos was originally written to introduce this to the intellectual elite of the time. The four Gospels were published to give them something to decode. Oh, we're we're not done, guys. For those of you into astro theology, like like uh, Santos Bonacci is really good, and he under he knows his material. Uh, you might want to you might want to defer to Santos's material on astral theology. He goes into depth and shows you all the correlates between the Bible, the well, the New Testament and the Zodiac. 
He's not the only one. He's just one of the most popular. So it is very interesting that the model that is used by Graham Hancock is, is this 25,920 year cycle. There's not a hint of that cycle at all in Tetra Biblos, which introduced this zodiacal model. None. It's not there. So you have to understand how, how deep the symbolism goes. At the same time that this model was created based off the four corners of heaven, the four quadrants of heaven, the bull, the lion, the eagle, and the man's face, the four royal stars, which separate the zodiac into a square. At the same time, we were providing Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But in the Revelation text, which is apocalypse, which means to uncover, which is what exactly what a, a Cracker Jack decoder model does. It, it unveils. It pulls back the cover. That's what this does. This is a decoding device. Mankind was given interpretations of the book of Revelation, the first four seals, by what? The tetramorph. The tetramorph had four heads. It was a divine angel. And in the middle of the tetramorph was the throne of God where God sit, sits. The first four seals are broken and one of the faces on the tetramorph tells John Oannes, that's his, really name, his real name, tells John what the first seal is, the first horseman, second horseman, third horseman, the fourth horseman, and then the fifth seal is broken, but it's not events in heaven. Then the tetramorph remains silent. It's not events on earth. It's events going on somewhere else. And it's a, it's a voice like many waters that comes from the middle of the tetramorph. It's God. God introduces the fifth seal because the fifth seal deals with souls that are in an altar waiting for their transformation, waiting for God to end the world in the tribulation so they can be, they can be, they can be redeemed. And he tells them to wait a small season. That's the fifth seal. The tetramorph do not get involved. That's the fifth seal. Because this, these aren't events that happen on earth. Remember, these are symbols found in the sky, but they, re they relate to events on earth. Now, Gerald Massey, Gerald Massey, when it comes to astral theology, guys, you got you to do that. So you have to understand, it's the lion, the bull, the eagle, and the man's face, which, which is represented on the zodiac as well. They're decoding the, the apocalypse and the revelation. It starts with the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation is absolutely packed with astral theology. The entire book of Revelation is packed is packed with these symbols. They're everywhere. Every single symbol here is found in the book of Revelation in multiple times. Every single symbol. Every single one of them, guys. So, but not so with the Old Testament. But with the New Testament, we find all kinds of correlates with this decoder here. This, this uh, Cracker Jack decoder ring. Now, the Zodiac is not old at all. And I know I pissed a lot of people off when I did a video about the antiquity of the tarot card system. Because these tarot decks, these tarot decks here, let me show you. Here's my, here's my, here's my tarot box right here. If you notice a lot of these symbols, you recognize, you recognize that some of these symbols are. But the tarot cards, this deck. Right here is divided between major arcana and minor arcana. I bought this as a gift to somebody. I'm not going to keep it. It has no value to me. But I bought it. It's really nice. I bought this as a gift. I'm going to give it to her pretty soon. But that deck right there is divided between major arcana and minor arcana. The tarot deck is not old. In my video, I show you that it's only 400 years old, maybe 460 years old. It was developed in France. It, they, they were fascinated with Egyptian symbols. 
uh, it was originally a deck of cards, a playing deck, and they, they expanded on it. But the 12 major arcana cards are not just numbered 12 like the Zodiac, but the 12 major arcana of the tarot are the 12 symbols of the Zodiac. This further shows that the tarot system is not old at all. It's a lot younger than the actual creation of Ptolemy's Zodiac. This right here. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so, in light of all this information, what is being hid? In light of all this, we now know that the Zodiac is not old at all. It didn't go through a long developmental process. In, in my other Zodiac deal, I show a chart showing every every piece of evidence of, of the Zodiac in the ancient world, and you see it's just not old at all. So we are led to believe by Graham Hancock that the Zodiac is so ancient that at Gobleki Tipi, however you say that damn word, there are symbols on the pillars that prove that these people were following Zodiacal ages. 9,000 years ago, Graham Hancock and many other authors all borrowing into the uh, the uh, archaeoastronomy models of the 25,920 year history of the Zodiac uh, calendar have all borrowed into this to try to perpetuate a model of Earth history which is untrue. And they use it to date all these ancient structures and, and to talk about Atlantis beyond the confines of the historical uh, uh, record. Remember, guys, when it comes to Atlantis, it's not just the 9,000 years. I have a bullet point presentation on YouTube that shows you all the facts of the Plato narrative, and they only they only fit in the, in the 13th century BC. You can even eliminate the 9,000-year mistake, which was, according to Eudoxus of Nidus, only 9,000 moons. You can eliminate that mistake. We can forgive Plato of that. But everything else Plato said only fits in the 13th century BC. It's not just the 9,000 year mistake. It's all the details of the Atlantis narrative. So remember, guys, Jason didn't bring us to the table. All I'm doing is reminding you of what over 50 other books by academics and scholars have already said. This is why the academia laughs at Graham Hancock. That's just why they laugh at it. It's like, man, you're, you don't know nothing. This begs the question, though. If you don't know shit about what you're talking about, and you can't cite accurate sources, and when you do cite sources, you twist them and you lie, if that's true, then it, then it, it, it begs the question, who do you work for? Why is this narrative being promoted? Because you and all your buddies are all publishing these books, getting hundreds of thousands of, of sales and all that stuff, and it's all bogus and easily disproven. And academics and scholars have long been writing articles explaining how all this is total BS. There are many academics who laugh at Graham Hancock for these reasons. And he steady gets on, on he steadily gets on 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 his, these platforms like Joe Rogan and London Real and these other people who give him who give him a podium and he talk he feels sorry for himself and he laments the fact that that uh, the the establishment doesn't like me the establishment well Jason of Arcades doesn't like you either but for totally different reasons because I can see everything you put out is agenda driven so what I want to know is who's funding all this? Who's funding all these lies, all this mystery? God, Gobleki Tipi is not ancient. I got a whole video showing you the same symbols at Easter Island. And academia swears up and down Easter Island's not even 600 years old. Come on, guys. This, we, the lies go deeper and deeper and deeper, guys. There's no Zodiac calendar. The Zodiac was invented recently. Therefore, Graham Hancock and all these others cannot date Hisserlik. They can't date Jericho. They can't date Babylon, ancient Egypt. They definitely can't date Gobeki Tipi by anything related to a zodiac. Just because there's a scorpion effigy on one of the pillars. Oh my God, there's a scorpion there. That must be Scorpio. It is so stupid. Yeah, I lose IQ points every time I think about that. So, 
you guys know I've already I have already proven my case. I have already invited anybody in the world that wants to debate about it about Atlantis not being 9600 BC. So all this zodiacal dating is bullshit. The 9,000 years has been corrected. We're done with that. Wrap it up. Done. We're done with the Sumerian, Babylonian, and ancient Hindu false dating of years when it was only days. We're done with that. I've already overkilled it. I have proven my case in my published books, and then that was that was a decade ago. But now I have reiterated everything with even new data in my YouTube presentations. The 432,000 shars of the Anunnaki was only 12 centuries. 432,000 turnings of the stars. Remember, shar does not mean year. Zechariah Sitchin, Sitchin introduced that based off erroneous translations of Barosis. Shar never meant year because other academics have shown us that ship manifests were also cargo was, was measured in shars. You can't measure packages in shars if shar means year. So anyway, I already showed the Olmec and the Mayan calendars. We've already corrected these for you guys. I've provided overwhelming evidence that these are the true calendars of the ancient world, not the false Zodiac calendar. All of Graham Hancock's assertions are, are, in, are in error. This isn't a simple mistake, guys. It's a mistake across the board on every category. Therefore, I have to question, who does he work for? This gets deep. It gets serious, guys. This isn't something, this isn't, these aren't simple mistakes at all. So I've also shown you in my dark scriptures playlist that, that uh, my dark scriptures, the old and new testaments are all borrowed from older sources and written many times over, changed, edited, heavily borrowing Babylonian and Greek mythology. But it is very damning that in the whole of Greek mythology, we don't have any knowledge of the Zodiac. That's, that's condemning. Because the zodiac, the zodiac is basically based off Greek and Babylonian symbols. So now we have to go to alchemy. I asked you guys earlier, so what are they hiding? Why all this deceit? Why put out millions of dollars worth of books by about 13 different authors distributed them all over the world, painting this huge 11,000 BC to 9,000 BC civilization, this whole reset deal. Why go through all this trouble of, of promoting a whole false idea, a, a Zodiac calendar that helps you date bullshit paradigms that you invent and make up and allows you to date real archaeological sites that aren't even that old? Why all the deceit? Remember, I asked that earlier. I do not intend in my videos to ask questions that I'm not going to answer. We're about to get to that now. So, <clears throat> I have shown many times in the alchemical woodcuts. You guys remember my pre past presentations. I show these beautiful treatises in, in, of alchemy where they show humans chained to a zodiacal construct in the sky. They show pictures of, of the Garden of Eden. They show pictures of hills. And in the, in the secret caverns in the hills, the elite are all dressed up, eating in tables in a banquet, while people on the surface are naked, scratching the ground. It's all there, guys. I show you in those alchemical treatises these elaborate pictures that are showing us resets, that are showing us the victims on the surface and the survivors in the underworld. They're showing us how humans are chained to a vast construct. It is always the zodiac in the simple. I've shown you in these pictures where the phoenix is often hidden a bird inside of a triangle, the pyramid. Sometimes the word phoenix is hidden in the leaves. I've shown these guys and I'm not done. I got another video coming out where I'm going to show you image after image after image after image of everything I'm telling you now. Over, like I like to do, I like to overwhelm you with data. I like to leave absolutely no, no seal unpatched. So that's coming. But you, some of you have already seen those videos. You know what I'm talking about. So, 
These alchemical woodcuts and this artwork, these illustrations and these paintings, they're all highly coded imagery and they all use Old Testament and New Testament and Greek mythology, all presented to us through carefully filtered Jewish symbolism. All the alchemical texts have Hebrew writing, Hebrew numbers, Jewish symbols, all the alchemical texts that show all this stuff, every bit of it. They all have Kabbalic, Hebrew, Jewish, Kabbalah references, all the alchemical uh, paintings, all of them do. It's everywhere. These zodiacs, they're found everywhere. In alchemy, art, and both the Kabbalah and zodiac feature heavily in the tarot cards as well. For those of you who are not subbed to Archaics TV, I'm not going to say much more here, but on Archaics TV, I have videos that show you this exact same time in history. 135 AD, Bar Kokhba Rebellion, Rome destroyed Jerusalem, and the Jews instantly, instantly created a secret fraternal organization to infiltrate European society. One of the first names was Freemasonry. This is how they did it. For any more data on that, you'll have to go to Archaics TV. But Zodiacs, Zodiacs and Kabbalic references are found everywhere in alchemy and all the alchemical treatises. So, Having isolated all this crossover, we, we must understand what is being hid through this process. The Old Testament does not. Listen, guys, you got to understand this. You've got to process this. The Old Testament is supposed to be a record of mankind's history through the lens of a people who are trying to fo follow God's word. But nowhere in the Old Testament is there a single reference to the Phoenix. The New Testament. The New Testament, not a single reference to the Phoenix. The entire spectrum, get this guys, this is a bomb. The entire full spectrum of Greek mythology, there is not one story about the Phoenix. Not one. You remember that time when Hercules went over that hill and fought the phoenix and put it back in the sky and the sun was okay and rescued the sun? Wait a minute. Do you remember when Poseidon came out of the ocean on his four-horse chariot and fought the phoenix and freed the moon from being red and, red and bloody? You remember that? No, you don't remember it. Because in the entire spectrum of Greek mythology, the phoenix is unknown. And yet... It's ancient Greek writers that wrote about the phoenix, but it wasn't in mythology. It symbolized a cyclical reset. Nowhere in the Greek stories does the phoenix make an appearance. So, the zodiac, right here, guys. The zodiac, this right here, this is where the phoenix should be. Do you see a phoenix on the zodiac? I'm going to give you all a minute to process that. Do you see a phoenix on the zodiac? Well, I'm not talking about the Mary Kay Cosmetics new oracle cards. I'm not talking about the teenage girl version of tarot cards. There's like 80... 80 Oh, different types of tarot decks now. They're making tarot decks for everything. I'm talking about the original tarot cards. I'm talking about the original tarot decks. 74 cards, 12 major arcana, the rest of them are minor arcana. In the original tarot cards, there's not one single Phoenix card. Remember, I asked you a question. What are they trying to hide? But in the artwork of alchemy, only in the alchemical treatises that Martin has showed on his channel and I have showed on my channel, only in these do all of a sudden does the phoenix make an appearance. The, the phoenix is everywhere. It's at the top. It's always shown close to the sun. 
<coughs> Phoenix is everywhere. Sometimes it's hidden in the foliage. Sometimes it's hidden in the patterns of a frame. Fe the word Phoenix is found everywhere. In Greek Phoenix, the Hebrew word for Phoenix is found in there. Sometimes they put R-O-K, R-O-C, which is a reference to the Phoenix. It's a ro the rock. Uh, yeah, R-O-C is a is a Arabic reference to Phoenix, Persian. It's very interesting, guys. But when it comes to the alchemical treatises and the artwork, you see the elite and the underground having fun. You see people on the surface scratching, scratching the ground for an existence. You see humans chained to the Zodiac. I'm not making any of this up. This is all very easy to see on my channel right now in my older videos. Yeah, guys. It's crazy. The alchemical imagery is telling us the truth. It's telling us the truth. That's why we're going to do some videos on that. So, the Phoenix knowledge has been deliberately scrubbed from the historical references, but it has resurfaced in 1948. Yeah, guys. Here is a collection of texts that have not been censored, rewritten, destroyed, none of that. The Gnostic Egyptian Nag Hammadi library texts were hidden for over 1,900 years. And in the On the Origin of the World text in the Nag Hammadi collection is a reference to the phoenix and how the phoenix was designed to keep the archons in check, the lords of time, the manipulators of our calendars. The phoenix was designed to keep them in check. It's described as a thing that induces cyclical destructions. Yeah. So those who are destroying history didn't have access to the Nag Hammadi text because they were hidden. So they didn't know. That's one, that's one text they couldn't destroy. Because if you read anything about the early Roman church, you will find that for over 800 years, the Roman church was on a campaign of genocide, destroying the students of the Gnosis. They didn't stop until the 1200s AD when they finally exterminated the Waldenses and the Cathars to a man, woman, and child and destroyed all their texts and books. Because it was the students of the Gnosis that said that Jesus was spirit and did not need to come in a physical body to save a bunch of spirits. God is spirit, and everything he does is in spirit and in truth. And the whole crucifixion story was nothing but the Yaldabaoth, the Dark One's version of salvation. It was trickery. And that the words of Jesus are all that one needed to survive and, and for the spirit to mature and for one to be born into the kingdom to receive a new avatar, rebirth, resurrection, call it whatever you want to. But the, the students of the Gnosis did not believe in a physical Jesus that had, had physically been crucified. This was a resurrection of the old Bronze Age institution of human sacrifice. Because in the Bronze Age, humans were sacrificed to make sure the sun didn't go dark. Yeah, this is why the church put a Phoenix episode, mixed it in with the crucifixion. In the Bible, the sun darkened and there was a major earthquake when Jesus was crucified. But it's not true. They made that up. We have 10 different books written by 10 different historians that were living in those times in the first century AD and not one of them mentioned. The crucifixion, the Jesus narrative, the earthquake, the eclipse, the sun darkening, none of them. We only find references to that in what scholars claim are Catholic forgeries by Dominican monks. Yeah, just like the donation of Constantine. Yeah, the Roman Catholic Church forged a whole document saying Constantine donated the entire realm of the Mediterranean in Europe to the church. It's called the donation of Constantine. But they effed up because centuries later, this genius is reading the donation of Constantine and he realizes, wait. 
the donation of Constantine, this is an original document. They say, yeah, it's original. Then why is it citing the Latin Vulgate? We didn't invent the Latin Vulgate till 100 years ago. Yeah, guys, the deception is real. So, yeah, it's crazy. All right. Oh, yeah, we're not done, guys. I'm sorry this presentation has lasted a little bit longer, but I told you, man, there's going to be nothing but truth bombs in here, and we're still not done. So, oh, uh, <clears throat> so the Phoenix has been hid, guys, and you see, too, that even, even the cipher the cipher, which was published in Tetra Biblos, the four books, to, to basically tell the educated of the time. Okay, look, here's your cipher. Ptolemy's Tetra Biblos is the Zodiac. This is the cipher to the other four books that we're introducing, which were the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Nothing. Nothing. I mean, Tetra Biblos, nothing in the New Testament and nothing in on the Zodiac references the Phoenix. Phoenix is hid. Now, why, just common sense now, why is the Zodiac not old? I know my archaics veterans know, but why is it impossible for the Zodiac to be, to be over 4,300 years old? Why is it impossible? Why would it be impossible for this system to exist? Because during the vapor canopy, you didn't see the sun. And the ancient sun, sun ages and the sun calendars of the Americas would have never come into being had not the sun just appeared. Remember the ancient Egyptian pantheon, the Aeneid? They already had all their gods. The ancient Egyptians had a whole pantheon. All the gods were all ancient. And then suddenly, all of a sudden, right before a great reset, Right at right there at a great reset called the second intermediate period, all of a sudden, even Egyptologists have been baffled. The Egyptians introduce a new god, but the new god should have been one of the first gods. They can't understand why the sun was introduced, Horus, as the very last god of the pantheon. They don't understand. I do, because the vapor can't be collapsed and the sun appeared. So they introduced a new god. But it wasn't without without uh, significance in Sumer as well, because the Sumerian civilization is the only civilization that we have records of that recorded their history as both before and after the Great Flood. And in the Sumerian pantheon, any Sumerian, Akkadian, Near Eastern scholar will tell you, Jason's not making this up, they will all tell you that at the very end of Sumerian civilization, they introduced a new god. What was that new god? It was Utu, sometimes called Utu Shamash. What did that god represent? What did he look like? Well, he was the sun in the sky. Why is the sun the very last god to enter the Sumerian pantheon? I know why. Because the vapor canopy collapsed, and then the sun was, was there. Same thing the ancient, ancient Mexican civilizations say. The sun was born at the Great Flood. That's why they called it the Water Sun. When the vapor canopy collapsed, it started the sun count systems. This is why a sun-based zodiac cannot be old. There it is. There it is. Graham Hancock, you see that? It's all new. So, Mr. Hancock, you can rescind all your statements about Gobekli Tepe being whatever age based off Zodiac and all that, because it's crap. It's absolute crap. Now, what's crazy, though, is Gobekli Tepe is only one of 22 or 23 Tepe sites. There's a whole bunch of those Tepe sites, and they were all buried. Stupid, stupid-ass theory they got. These people originally, they 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 buried their, their civilization before they left. Do you have any idea the manpower that would be, that would be needed to go get the dirt to cover that, come on, man. It's just ridiculous. Vapor canopy collapsed and all those places got buried. It's a mud flood. It's crazy. 
Here's what's interesting. Gobekli Tepe is in Turkey. You want to know something interesting about Turkey? Because I've done the research. I know, I know the Krimis can agree with me. There's no ancient Anatolian zodiac. It's right there, same, same area of the world. You know what? You also, right there in the same area of the world, the same region exactly as the Hittite Empire, the people of Hatti, they had no zodiac. After they fell, a new civilization emerged at the exact same location. They're called the Phrygians, the people of Phrygia. No zodiac, not even a hint of it. After they passed, another culture of people related to the first emerged and became a mighty empire. They were called the Lydians, exact same area of the world. The Lydians recognized no zodiac. But Graham Hancock said that a scorpion on a rock meant that that was Scorpio. Therefore, this is dated to 8,000 BC or whatever. You should lose IQ points listening to that drivel. So, <clears throat> so somebody had asked me. Somebody asked me, when did the 23 degree angle tilt? What they're referring to is obliquity. I'm not done with this presentation, but I'm going to answer this question because it's important, guys. Thank you for those likes. I appreciate that, guys. This is important because today the sky sim shows us that we are, we are tilted at a 23.5 degree obliquity. This means the axis is inclined 23.5 degrees toward the ecliptic. Well, well, this is the sky sim. You know, you guys know I don't believe we're on a globe. I used to believe that. I used to, I believe we live in a realm. I believe every bit of this is simulated and the perimeters of our existence are modified by our belief. So I don't really hold to, I don't really care if the world is flat or if it's globular. It is, it is a non-issue to me. But the sky sim, which is very real to me because it's optics, shows us that the arc is at 23.5 degrees. Therefore, at one time, all the traditions agree that at the great flood, the dragon fell. When the dragon fell, the waters of the sky broke. That's the great flood. It's the collapse of the vapor canopy. But the fall of the dragon is a reference to the ancient pole star. This is where you, we get into some really good anthropological research, which I've documented in my Lost Scriptures of Giza book, where I show that the universal ancient belief of the old world was that the pole star was the eye of the dragon. It is Alpha Draconis. The eye never moved while the dragon's tail moved around one third of the, of the circumpolar stars. Then the great flood occurred. And when the Phoenix appeared in 2239 BC in the month of May, the whole sky shifted 23.5 degrees. That's the obliquity. When the, when the vapor canopy collapsed, the sky never went back. That 23.5 degree shift is why the axis now points at the great bear. It's now at, well, might be Ursa Minor, one of the bears. The, the pole star Polaris that we have today is in the bear constellation. That's where the pole, that's where our axis is pointed now, but that's not where it was pointed when the dragon reigned in the pre-flood world. Remember, this is why the Chinese called their earliest rulers during the vapor canopy, they called them the dragon kings. They received their authority from heaven. They were heavily bearded. And when the dragon of the sky fell, the mandate of heaven changed and the dragon kings lost their power. Yeah, guys, the story is the same the world over. <clears throat> Let's see. So we're not done with it. Also, uh, So there was many, there was many attempts at the creation of a zodiac, the lunar zodiacs, but none of them took. None of them, none of them took, and we have almost zero data on any of these. The Babylonians had the Mule Appen, you know, eighteen constellations that they that they that they observed, but it was nothing like these. It wasn't even the same symbols. It was nothing like nothing like this. 
This is a construct specifically designed by Ptolemy. Tetrabiblos. Yeah, guy. Our, our, guys, our entire history is manufactured. The entire New Testament was manufactured. All of it is coded. All of it is in, all of it. All of it is in the symbols. And this is this is your Cracker Jack decoder right here, put out in Tetrabiblos to mirror the four Gospels. <coughs> anyway, so astrologers, tarot card readers. Diviners, tea, tea card, tea, tea readers, paul, uh, uh, palmistry. You know, listen, guys, it's never the system; it's always the individual. These systems allow grifters to come out and capitalize on all this BS. It's all BS. But those who have their hearts in the right place, it doesn't matter what system they use. And I, I have many videos on this. And as a matter of fact, this is also a a a, 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 a a subject matter of my book, Awaken the Immortal Within. It does not matter the system that you borrow from, because when spirit is when spirit is manifesting through a system, just like the Chinese say, the Chinese have an old proverb. That proverb is uh when the, when the right man makes use of the wrong means, the wrong means still work in the right way. It's all about spirit. That's why some astrologers are full of shit. And you easily know who they are by their actions toward others. It's not spirit guiding them. And then there's some astrologers that nail it. They get it. They get it. It's all pattern recognition. The exact moment in time when a soul is born into this world, it's all pattern recognition. And for and for a couple thousand years, people have been noticing, okay, when Mercury is here and the moon is there and, and you were born in here, these are the type of, uh, of things that will happen in your life. These horoscopes are built by experience. It's pattern recognition, but it doesn't mean they're all true. See, well, I have problems with, I don't have problems with individual astrologers because I know some that were very accurate, but they've also made mistakes. However, I have problems with astrology being promoted as if it's a real phenomenon and it's not the individual that makes it real. Let me give you an example. I know 2,977 people died on, on 9-11 in 2001, and I can't remember a single astrologer predicting that many people were going to die and these terrible events were going to happen in New York City. I don't remember any, and I have a problem with that because there was a lot of astrologers doing their thing back then. But they're not the only ones. What about Malaysian Flight 370? Hundreds of people vanished and have never been seen again. Why were no astrologers on that? How come no one predicted? Because according to the tenets of astrology, all hundreds of those passengers in their astrological natal charts should have seen some type of doom, so should have seen something dark going on that day. So, and again, 9-11 was 2,977 fatalities, died horrible deaths. If we were to look at the natal charts, if we were to look at the astro astrological predictions for all 2,977 of those deaths at 9-11, what are we going to see? I'm going to tell you what we're going to see. We're going to see different planets in different houses. We're going to see different moons in different places, the suns in different places, according to the juxtaposition of somebody's natal chart. We're going to see every possible combination known to man. But astrologers are going to explain why it happened according to each chart. It's all amorphous and it's all highly subjective. I have a problem with that. So why didn't any astrologers come out and put books out? Get on YouTube and start preaching. Tell everybody that the whole world was going to change by January 2020 and that many people within two years wouldn't be here anymore and that others would fundamentally change in personality and in physique for decisions they made in 2020 and 2021. How come no astrologers came out and said all that? Why didn't we get it? Well, there's Facebook. Facebook alone should have exploded with astrologers telling everybody what was about to happen. Didn't happen. Sorry. 
So I, I'm aware there may have been more, but I'm aware of two major tsunami events that happened in one in Indonesia and one in Japan, both of them since, since 9-11, uh, 2010, 2014, something like that, uh, 2017. I don't know, there might have been a third tsunami. No astrologers predicted all the people who were going to get washed out to sea and drown and never be seen again. Tragic losses of life for both tsunamis. No astrologers predicted those events. Why? Why? So, I'm very curious as to why. Totally against about 95% of the world's opinion. Totally against it. Biden beat Trump for the U.S. presidency. Trump walked away. He didn't have to walk away. Believe me, at the time, there was a whole lot of people, man, that would have done anything that man said. But he walked away. Because we were told he got outvoted. Now, nobody believes that today. But that's what we were told. But it, but it shock, the shock value, the ripples of shock that went around the world when that happened. And we found out that Biden won. It wasn't just the United States that was shocked. Every government in the world was like, what? how that happen? Listen, not one astrologer had predicted that. Not the one I can find. Please correct me in the comment section if you know of any. And I'm not talking about somebody who's got 400 subs or something. I'm talking about somebody major who put out major information for everybody to know. It's not happening. I, don't, I haven't seen it. <coughs> so, <clears throat> we recently had some real tragic things go down in Maui, Hawaii. Do we have anybody on YouTube or any other platforms who did astrological projections showing that these evil things were going to happen? Do we have them? I don't, I don't believe we do. Correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. But I, I just don't know. I'm just, I'm a critic, guys. I'm sorry. I'm a critic by nature. I'm very logical. I just, it, uh, you know, I'm really not into the channeling. I believe that a lot of these people just make up stuff on the fly. Uh, I'm very, very confident that many of them do make up stuff such as Helena Blavatsky. A lot of people like to like like Isis Unveiled. They like the secret doctrine, but I've read both of them. I have a copy. I was just showing Dawn last night. I have a copy, a very old copy of, of oh, the secret doctrine by Blavatsky. She made the same mistakes Hancock made. She cites a lot of the Golden Dawn material too. She cites the 25,000 year cycle. She cites that Atlantis was 12,000 BC. She follows this cipher. She follows this calendar, this narrative. That's why I can't take her seriously. She also cites that most of her material comes from a very obscure book that has never been seen by anybody else in the world. The Book of Dyson. Okay, I can't buy into that. Can't buy into that, but it doesn't even matter because the chronology is my specialty. And when I find a writer who's trying to promote a version of history using what can easily easily be disproven because the mistakes were already corrected by ancient writers that Graham Hancock should have known about. Helena Blavatsky should have read Eudoxus, but I have to believe they didn't or they're lying. Because these mistakes were already corrected. And they already knew that it was 9,000 moons, not 9,000 years. Yeah, it's not. I don't believe people are making the, the, these type of mistakes, guys. No. The, the, these are agendas that are being played out. So if astrology doesn't really have any utility, then it's entertainment. I'm not saying there aren't deep spiritual teachings to be found in in astrology. I'm not saying that astro that that uh, astral theology is wrong. I, actually, I'm saying just the opposite. I'm saying that astrology as a predictive system is only right because of pattern recognition, not because of the system itself. This is a crackerjack decoder for the New Testament. That's what this is. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm all. My main issue here with this presentation 
is like Graham Hancock dating Gobekli Tepe. You can't date a, a structure that's been underground and dug up that has a scorpion effigy on it. You can't call that a Zodiac when the Zodiac didn't even exist when that thing was buried. That's my issue. You can't get around that argument. I have, I have shown here the Zodiac was unknown all around the world, all the way up until the, the Zodiac of Dendera was put in by the Greeks under the Romans in Egypt about 75 BC. And then another Zodiac appeared, which is different than the one at Dendera. <coughs> and this is the one we go by now. And it was invented by Ptolemy in Tetra Biblos, the four books. This one here. This is how Graham Hancock dates ancient ruins that were buried underground. That's it. That's it. He has nothing else. It's a scorpion on there. That, that, that there right there means that it's Scorpio. Oh, my God. Push these IQ points back in my head before I lose them. Yeah, man, it's crazy. It's just, it's absolutely crazy, guys. We can't get around the fact. Fundamental fact, guys. We just can't get around this fact. In the whole of Greek mythology, there's no references, no stories of the Zodiac nor are there any appearances of the phoenix. All throughout this presentation, I've shown, I've shown you the facts. You interpret them any way you want to. To me, I'm telling you now, the Zodiac is literally 18 centuries old. It was written, it was designed at the exact same time as the New Testament. And the New Testament has hundreds of stories allegories, metaphors, symbols, imagery, and language that is all wrapped around this Cracker Jack decoder right here. The tetramorph, the tetramorph even makes its appearance. The four royal stars makes, makes its appearance in there. Listen, guys, it's all, it's all by design. But this entire system totally omits the phoenix, nor does this Ptolemaic zodiac in New Testament books ever mention a 25,920 year cycle, which was known to Helena Blavatsky, which was which is promoted by Graham Hancock and all these other authors that put together all these sensational books. Look, I'm telling you, this is deeper than you think. It's deeper than you think, guys, because when all these same authors jumped on the 2012 bandwagon, Graham Hancock was on the 2012 bandwagon too. He's one of the only survivors from that genre of writers. Most of them just fell off into obscurity. But Graham Hancock trudged on. All these new writers coming out with all, all these new theories about Gobeki Tipi and, and Anunnaki this and all that, Liz, they're all wrong. Guys, remember, in all my presentations, I've been as honest as possible. I show you my, my sources. I show you all uh, my citations. And I'm telling you now, I don't know of any other person in the world who has done the research I have in chronology. But it was only a it's only a chronologist who could un, uh, who could put all this together. Because I have to study calendars and timekeeping systems and understand in order to decode what people's belief systems were. And in doing all that, I'm able to easily unravel all this drivel that's being published today. Every bit of it is false. And it's ridiculous. This is why no one has met my challenges. This is why no one wants to debate me on these issues. It's not that they're intimidated by intelligence. I don't believe that. It's not that they don't have good books. I don't believe that at all. It's that they know that their own theories and research will never stand up to the scrutiny. It won't. We are not only, we are not only being deceived. We are being deceived in a very, I'm talking about a very organized fashion. 
what I have revealed in this video goes straight to the heart of a lot of things that are in the community right now. Straight to the heart. That's why so many people, so many cha channels have attacked Archaics. So many people have. Guys, you don't even know. People that you used to see on my channel a lot have totally turned on me. Yeah. People who started channels that used to be linked to the Archaics community, people who started channels using my material have now put themselves as enemies of me are now writing nasty comments about me. Yeah, making derogatory remarks in their videos. I'm not worried about none of it. I'm telling, I've already told you guys, I'm moving forward, it's nothing. But the resistance is real. There's a lot of channels out there that hate my guts. The tarot, the tarot readers, the galactic federations, this data completely collapses the whole ancient aliens narrative. Every bit of it. Yeah, Galactic Federation narrative, the whole channeling, all the channeling narratives, all the people who believe that the tarot cards are ancient, all those who now hold that the, that the Zodiac is ancient, it's all bullshit. Every bit of it's BS. I've already cited all those ancient authors, all those civilizations, all the ancient epics, all these massively old texts. I've cited them right here. You guys are going to get the free PDF. You can download the PDF and you can see all everything I've talked about in this video. You're going to see it laid out intelligently. And please send Graham Hancock a copy. But that's my presentation, guys. I don't want to rant any longer. But this data, not just this, but many videos I've done in the past 30 days, collapse all these narratives promoted across our uh, promoted all the way across YouTube. I'm talking about the, the ancient aliens narrative. I might focus on it here in the near future, just so everybody's on the same page that how how comical, how ridiculous it is. Yeah, guys, I have never said I don't believe in UFOs. I have never said that I don't believe that another race occupies this world. But they're not ancient aliens. There's been people in the underworld since day one. And their technologies and infrastructure are, are how we on the surface keep getting blessed with all these new technologies. This has been a game that's been played out over and over and over and over. We already got new authors popping up now. Not just the one I dissected his book where he was trying where he was trying to change the Phoenix narrative. We have a new one I just discovered. Did the same thing. Wrote two books in 2023. I'm about to dissect his books too. Another guy who's trying to change the whole narrative on the Phoenix and all that stuff. So we have we have now a concerted effort. Somebody with deep pockets is now paying people to attack archaics. And you know what? I'm telling you guys now, I'm up for the challenge because from day one, when I started my mission, I have always been able to draw from myself more than I contain. And I understand what I'm doing is empowered by spirit. I just, I have an eighth grade education. I'm just a good old boy. But what comes out of me comes from somewhere else. And all these people that have aligned themselves against me, they're going to fall. Because I'm far from done, my friends. And that totally ends my presentation today. I love you guys.